Now, Joan, you do a lot of social marketing and so yes. forth, and you look at um, things like marketing campaigns. So I guess the myth that we need to run past you is that marketing campaigns really don't have a great deal of effect. So whilst you think about that, I've got a clicker pad question on the screen. How aware were you of your speed when you came in tonight, or if you, if you came straight from work, perhaps when you came to work this morning? So how aware were you of the speed when you were driving? Let's see what the results were. Well, that looks fairly promising, doesn't it? Mm. Most people pay close attention. Yeah, I want to see that 4%. I think I'll get your registration number for later. <laughs> But what does this tell us about the sort of market research yeah. and marketing that you do? John, um, this is a critical result because the latest behavioural theory actually tells us that depending on how conscious we are of our behaviour, a different type of strategy would be required. So for example, if we think about the last time we did speed, the last time we even went one or two kilometres above the speed limit, I'd like you to be thinking about was that a conscious decision or was that just something that happened? Was it an automatic process in your mind? Okay, so I want to explain to you that there are two approaches that we could use if we want to influence behaviour. One of them is what we call a social marketing approach. And what we do with social marketing is we attempt to raise awareness of a problem or an issue and identify with people what the alternative might be, in this case, to drive on or below the speed limit and then actually promote the reasons why people should do that. That's what a, a, a typical social marketing campaign would do. And there are some really good behavioural theories which we'll have a look at in a moment that can guide us to create really effective campaigns. On the other hand, if the process is more automatic and we have found that a lot of us speed at very low levels because we're just not thinking about the speed we're going at. If that is the case, then what we have found with the latest behavioural theory is that we need to look more into behavioural economics. So how can we create the environment or develop the choice architecture that nudges people towards the behaviour we want? So the things that we wanted to talk about tonight was just the difference between a social marketing approach which attempts to change minds and a behavioural economics approach which attempts to change the environment. Now depending on which one is, is going to be most effective, a different strategy would be required. In terms of looking at speeding, assuming that we are conscious of the speed that we're going at, what's really important when we're looking at a social marketing campaign is how do people feel about the speed they're going at. So for many people that we've done research with, they actually believe that if they drove a kilometre or two or five or ten above the speed limit, it probably wasn't a problem. They didn't see themselves as being the stereotypical speeder who causes the deaths and carnage on the road. They actually saw themselves as being just like you or I, someone who is responsible and trying to do the right thing but occasionally goes over the speed limit. So what's really important in a social marketing campaign when you're dealing with that sort of person is to attempt to reposition that low level speeding as being a dangerous thing to do and is something that's unattractive. So not just rationally telling people that if they speed a little bit over the limit they could have more um, casualty type accidents, but actually showing people that if we go even a little bit above the limit, we're just as irresponsible and negative as people who speed at higher levels. So have you done some, uh, some campaigns around that theory? We certainly have and um, I'd like to show you um, the Creepers campaign in a moment but just before I do I'd like to share with you a really interesting model for understanding behaviour change. So could we have the first slide please? So looking at this model what this is suggesting is that whenever we're trying to influence the behaviour we can divide up our population depending on what stage of behaviour they're in. So if we're talking about low level speeders we could have people that are in the rejection stage. So these are people who say, um, I think that the speed I go is fine. I actually think I'm at the front of the bell curve. I'd probably be able to react quicker so I can speed a bit more and probably still not hurt someone, for example. So they're thinking the speed they travel is fine even though they're speeding at a low level. The task, if we have a lot of people at that rejection stage, is to make them feel uncomfortable with their behaviour. 
so that they move into pre-contemplation, where they're open to messages about changing their behaviour. And then on to contemplation, where they actually want to change and are starting to change their behaviour. Then on to action, they're starting to do the right thing more often and then maintenance, they're doing it all the time. So with a lot of our campaigns, what we're doing is quantitative research with the populations to understanding how many people are at these different stages of behaviour and then depending on what stage they're actually at, we create a different type of message or execution or campaign to move them through the stages. So it's not just a case of making an advert? Not quite. <laughs> there is a lot of evidence now that applying this type of behavioural theory to a campaign makes a huge difference in terms of how effective it can be. And that certainly was what was done in the Creepers campaign. All right, well perhaps we need to move through that. Thank you. So how did that go as far as uh, your market research after the event? Well, what we found was when we talked to low-level speeders, um, there were a whole variety of reasons that people speed, but one group of low-level speeders really wanted to, to be responsible and do the right thing. They just didn't realise that their behaviour was actually irresponsible. And for that group of low-level speeders, this ad was extremely effective. I think we could move on to the next graph and it will actually show us that prior to the campaign period, we had around 61% of people who said that people who'd ever sped saying that they'd gone over the limit in the last two weeks. So before the campaign, we had about 61% of people doing that. Um, once the campaign was actually run, that reduced down to 51% and stayed down at that pretty much a 10% lower level for the duration of that campaign. So this is a way that we have to track, is the advertising working, is it making a difference? And I think that type of result is the sort of result that we, we, we are pleased to see um, as a result of this type of campaign. Well, lovely. Perhaps there might be some questions then of Joan from the, from the floor. Uh, we might live in a pretty dry state, but when it rains, that seems to me when I see most accidents. Mm. The speed limits, are they set for dry weather or wet weather? And have you, uh, is there any sort of, uh, is it taken into consideration when doing the campaigns that you do creeping, for instance, uh, about reducing your speed during wet weather? Mm, that's a very good question. Um, with the, the creeper campaign, what we're trying to do is change the norm, change the social norm about speeding behaviour. So what we're trying to do is, regardless of the weather, we want people to stop and think when they're going over the speed limit and immediately to associate with that negative image of someone who does that. And in that way, bring the behaviour to consciousness and get people to stop speeding. So I'm afraid what my answer to you is that the ad was created no matter what the weather conditions to turn people off um, low level speeding. Okay, is there a question from the top? Yeah, hi. Um, my, I think my problem with the, the Creeper ad is the fact that there is an awful lot of people that you would have liked to have seen the ad who might not have purely because there's a lot of people not watching commercial television anymore. So have you come up with other strategies mm. for yeah. this you know, this new world where everybody's on the internet. Yeah. Look, that's a fantastic um, point to make. One thing I will say is that generally we find that the most effective way to get to most target audiences is through commercial TV. So I think with this type of campaign, we see anywhere between 60 to 95% of the population do actually see the ad on TV. Having said that, I have to say that with this campaign and I think all of the other campaigns that the Motor Accident Commission runs, there is a multimedia um, uh, channels used. So there's stuff on the internet, um, there's radio, there's television, there's um, newspaper, there's posters, there's all sorts of other um, types of channels, exactly to your point, to target people who may not be watching commercial TV. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and thank you, Joan Young. Thank you.